Hello guys, so on this video I want to show you how you can perform some detailed more accurate testing of your batteries and your charging components with the help of uh, any kind of multimeter. If you don't have any kind of uh, tester then this video will not be that helpful for you. So look for my other videos that you can do some basic testing without any of the testers. So if you have your machine on, you turn on the, the ignition switch and you don't have all of those three bulbs lighting up on the accelerator handle or maybe you're going to have a different type of a battery level display and it's not uh, fully charged obviously. Maybe you're going to have only two bulbs or one bulb. In some cases if the battery charge is in critical uh, low level then you will not have any lights at all. So if you don't have any problems with the ignition switch itself and you already checked the fuse condition then you need to perform some, some other tests before you are actually going to suspect any problems with the batteries itself. Maybe it could be the battery, maybe it could be the one of the wires is loose internally inside of the battery pack because you're going to have a three individual batteries inside and they are connected with each other with wires so if you have a multimeter then you can easy check few components before removing the battery pack from the frame so let's start with checking if your battery plug is actually producing any voltage so on a fully charged batteries, you're supposed to have at least 38 volts. At least. It's supposed to be 38, 39, even 40. In my case, I have 39 volts, as you see. So I am testing the battery output plug that's coming out from the, from the pack, as you see. So in my case, it's okay. So, but if you are testing and you have less voltage, for example... You have only uh, you have only 35 or 25 volts. That means the batteries are not charged. But if you don't have any numbers, for example, if you have zero volts, that means that you have a problem with this fuse holder wire that is not passing power through, or maybe simply you have a loose wire internally. So you will have to remove the battery pack and inspect it. That would be your first sign. Now, but if you do have a 35 or 36 or 37 volts, which is a low battery charge, as I said before, it's supposed to be at least 38. Then let's find out what is the problem why you don't have 38 or 39 volts so let's start with checking your charger if it's producing 41 volts at this plug so the plug will be marked with number one two and three you're going to have three holes but the actual middle one which is number two is not connected to anything so it's empty so you're going to test only number one and number three so with any kind of a multimeter that you have as I said before, you have to put on a DC settings and insert probe in number one and number three. And your tester is supposed to show that you have 41 volt like I do right now. Okay, so my, my charger is working good. Now, when you plug in to, to your batteries, it's going to make some noise. Even though that battery plug is not connected and it's making some noise looks like the power is getting in yes the power is getting in from the charger only but not from the battery pack so so ignore that quicken noise that's only because the ignition was on otherwise it's it's not helping you to recharge your batteries your batteries are re recharging only when those two plugs are in okay now you remember that you have 41 volts coming from here now this voltage is going into the charging port and it's not attached directly to the batteries. It's going to the machine. And from the machine, it's coming back to this plug into the battery pack. So 
other words, if you have 41 volts coming into this port, it's supposed to come out from this wire also. So let's see if we have the same voltage. I'm going to plug in my charger. Yeah, even, th even this noise that you hear right now, that's your first indication that the battery is low and you have a low battery charge. Even that is not connected. But, but this is the symptom of the controller. Controller is actually notifying you that you, you have a problem with the charging, with your batteries. or So you have to do some tests. Okay, now, when I plugged in my charger into the charging port, and from the charging port, those two wires going into the, to the ATV, I'm supposed to have same voltage here. If I don't have 41 volts on those two wires right there, that's mean that one of those two wires are disconnected from the back of this charging port. Let me show you how this, how this charging port looks like. I have a spare one. So this is the same charging port. And on the back of it, it just soldered it with two wires. If one of the wires is loose or broken internally, then obviously you're not going to have the power. So let's see if I have 41 volts right here. And there you go. So I have 41 volts coming out from the charging port. So I have it here and I have it there. Now, when the power is getting into the machine, it's going into the controller. And from the controller is passing this power back into the battery plug, battery pack. So that's mean that we, we have 41 volt here. We have 41 volt here on this charge plug, right? And we're supposed to have same 41 volt here. So let's see. I'm going to test on those two wires. And there you go. We have 41 volts coming out from the machine to the battery plug. Now, after you plug it back and your charger is not switching to the red light, like in my case it is switching, so everything is working perfectly and the charger is recognizing the batteries. So if your charger stays in green, now this is the time for you to suspect that you have a problem with the batteries. So only then you have to remove the bracket if you have a newer machine with the metal bracket and the plastic case. Unplug those two plugs and remove the, the batteries itself. So now after the removing the batteries, once you remove those screws, you put on the side and you're going to find three individual batteries connected to each other, as you see. Wiggle each wire individually to see if nothing is loose here. Check for all of the, if, if you don't see any corrosion or any kind of acid coming out from the batteries. They are fully sealed, but it does not mean that they could not be damaged during the shipping and they are not leaking with that acid. So in lift up each battery gently inspect it for any kind of leakage or cracks and then you can test each battery individually with the multimeter so each battery is supposed to be at least 12.8 volts if it's fully charged at least and obviously it's going to be 13 volts like in my case if the battery is fully charged 13, 13, and 13. And that's why you have proper, just one second, and that's why you have a 40, that's why you have almost 40 volts at the main battery plug. That's how it's supposed to do supposed to be if you don't have these 40 volts and you tested each battery individually that you have at least 12.8 volts but you don't have a voltage coming out from here that's mean that this red wire is not passing power so you have to test it for the continuity
and uh, with your multimeter if you put the uh, settings on ohms and if you have a sound confirmation so if you touch those two props that's mean that it's passing power so same as here if your red wire is passing power this big one the main wire so from A to B it's supposed to make this noise so let's see okay as you see mine is passing power same way you can test black wire or any wire and even short wires you can test if they are passing power now what if you test it with your multimeter that you have a 12 volt on each individual battery well 12.8 or more but machine still does not drive and uh, your charger does not switch to the red charging mode then let me show you a little example i have a two used batteries right here this is really a rare case by the way so let me show you obviously when you test in each battery individually you're going to have 12 volts but if your battery is that it's going to show you only 3.4 volts like in my case so you know that the battery is shot needs to be replaced well here is another really really rare case battery looks good no leaks no cracks nothing and look at the voltage it shows 12.5 like everything's okay but it's not always that the basic multimeter can give you a accurate diagnostics that your battery is still good it doesn't mean that the battery is good until you are going to hook up to the professional tool like i do have which is you don't have to buy it but you can go to the battery places and they can test it for you for example i am hooking up this special equipment that shows that i have same 12.44 volts which is looks like good right and then when i continue to test it let's see here it says bad batteries you can see on this display okay so even what I'm trying to show you here, sometimes it looks the battery is not leaking, it's not swollen, and you have a good voltage reading from your basic tester, but it doesn't mean the, the battery is not shot. Because internally, each battery has six cells, and if one of those cells are shot, then nothing can de de detect it except the special equipment, which are only battery shops they have it so don't buy any equipment it's too expensive just go to any battery shop like batteries plus bulbs and they will test it for you for free that you will know that, that you know which battery exactly is shot as not and not holding the charge now remember that if you have any problems with the charging port that is not passing power and you have a newer machine that came with this kind of adapter you don't have to worry about this charging port anymore you can use this adapter by plugging directly and avoiding this charging port so once you will plug in your charger through this adapter it also going to switch to the red light and charge your batteries on the bike or off the bike it doesn't matter so this adapter you can charge it anytime if the charging port failed or if you removed your batteries for the winter storage or if you have any other problems because this is how it works I just wanted to show you I have a spare parts so for the educational purposes only this is how it works you have a just one second. Basically, this charging port is right here, located on this battery pack. You have a charger going here. So voltage going through the main brain of the machine, main controller. So ignore all of those wires. They got nothing to do to the charging. 
So it's connected to the char uh, to the controller, and from controller is coming back. The voltage is coming back to your battery. So when you will connect it, it's going to switch to the red light, like in my case, as you see. So as you can see, I can charge it through the controller, or I can charge it with the with the charging port only. So it doesn't matter which way. So if that controller is not passing power because maybe those wires are inter uh, internally loose or broken, then obviously you're not going to have any voltage coming out to your battery. So the, so for this in this case, the best way would be to have a adapter. Okay. Well, I hope this was a pretty helpful video for you how to do some of your charging and battery testing in details if you have any problems with the charging port maybe the controller is not passing power and how to test your batteries remember that if you ever been replacing this charging uh, port itself and it came without the plastic plug so you were inserting those two wires by yourself check if those wires are not crossed so the black has to be aligned with black and the red has to be aligned, uh, aligned with red if you will cross, uh, cross those two wires your charger will never switch from green to red all right well i hope that uh, you will fix it after watching this video thank you bye